why don't I ask these in the order that we got them? And sure, yeah, this is be, fire. It's just totally random stuff. I mean, if I, if okay. I can't answer, I, I won't. So Funkbon wanted to know, will ghosts going forward have a have a voice role in the game, or will it be as it's been for the for the expansion pack so far, in that there is another narrator serving the role of ghost? Yeah. Um, the ghost uh, will be returning. I take the king. You know, we, we have doors that need to be opened, and... Uh, uh, cracks that need to be scanned. So uh, <laughs> he, 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 the, the ghost will be returning playing a role. And uh, you know what we we're trying to do with the uh, Dark Below and House of Wolves was really uh, bring forward some of the other characters, you know, and, and uh, introduce new characters in the world like Eris and, and Varix, right. and flesh them out. You know, like a, a strong story is only as good as its characters. And so that's that's really what we we're trying to do there. Um, and Taken King, we're, we're doing that same thing. Like we're taking characters, some of the characters you know and love, and, and, and bringing them forward. And, and, and the ghost is one of those people. Iconic Banana wanted to know, when is the next Bungie podcast? That's funny, I asked that myself. <laughs> no, it, it, uh, it's weird. I got into podcasts really late in life, like actually recently, like the last year. Uh, and so I've been listening to them a lot in my draft work and whatever, and so I've been thinking, like, you know, I know the Bungie podcast was a really big deal in the past at one point, and uh, so I've asked around about myself, but um, I've not gotten a good answer, so uh, I don't know. Do Titans get Blink in the Taken King? <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know. Like, we have, you know, with the three new subclasses, they have a, a lot of abilities. I think, you know, the number of nodes in each tree is like 30 or something, so that's like 90 things to, you know, so I just don't know all of them. Uh, so I can't give you a confirm or deny on that question. I just, I don't, I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. But I can tell you the Titan's getting an awesome new super. Like, you know, the Sunbreaker is fabulous. And the, you're, you're going to play him later today, hopefully, when you, you know, when you yeah. have a PvP. And, the Hammer of Soul, his new you know, flame-powered, you know, solar-powered hammer is just awesome because it gives him a great range of attack, right? Like mid-range, you know. Uh, but then he can just toss and just bam, bam, bam. But then with some of the talents, he's also getting a vicious melee, right? Where you saw him see in the trailers, he just can just whack dudes with him, right? So it's an interesting dynamic because now you have a super that gets to do two different modes, essentially. Right? Whereas Golden Gun is, you know, it shoots... Yeah, you know, of course you can shoot guys at close, close range, but, but it can't go super far range. And, right. Um, and so it, it's just pretty cool to have uh, a super like that that's, that's that's that different. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Most of the supers we've seen so far have been either ranged or not ranged, yeah. not both. Or, yeah, it's for singular purpose, right? Right. There's a, I think there, there's a lot of depth to the type uh, Sunbreaker. And, you know, I've been using it for a long time now. I still like learning new things. Like, oh, you know, like, what's the best way to play this role? You know? um, I, I hope to get good at that somewhere. Insane Drive had probably the most generic or the most uh, open-ended question in the list. What did Year One teach you? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, Wow, so many ways to You know, I'm thinking like, what did it teach me as a game developer, you know, or what, what you know, was some summary of what it taught Bungie? Um, if you want to get I, I, think I, I think I would go back to what I said earlier, which is, uh, you know, we've updated the game so much, right, and we're going to continue, like, we have a, you know, well-documented 10-year plan for Destiny. We have this character who's yours you own, and you're going to develop them over a period of time, and, and you're going to take them off the shelf when a major expansion, like, the King comes out and move them around the world and become more powerful again. And so we've, uh, you know, really committed to supporting the game and constantly updating it. And I think one of the things that, that we've... That, was it that surprised me? I can't remember the question. Was it what, what surprised us, or what, what did we learn? What did it teach you? Um, yeah. It taught us was, you know, how much the game is going to change in response to players. And I think Bungie's always updated its games. You know, we've always had a strong community and a, and a, and a, and a good relationship with the vocal community, community, a vocal community. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, when you, you when you, you think about some some of the things that we've done and introduced, like we, I don't think we could have imagined doing these things, not because they're like heretical or whatever, but you just, you couldn't see it, you know, and, right. it, and it's only through the interaction with the community and playing the game and being, you know, when we go home at night, we're community members too, you know, like we play the game on our couches, the controller in our hand, and we're playing with all of you, and you know, you get, you see things differently when you play at home. Right? Like it's just you can you play something in the lab, you think it's fine and it's all good, and you sit down on the couch and you're like, Oh my god, I can't believe we thought this was a good idea. <laughs> you know? And so uh, 
really like the game is going to constantly and, and continually evolve in response to the community, and maybe that uh, should be more obvious than it was. Like I think people will say that uh, you know that that's true in any online game or whatever, but uh, it's been it's been certainly really true for Destiny. I've been, I've been really impressed with the with the, the way that updates have been sort of targeted to things that bother large chunks of the community, as opposed to, so Bungie's always made the games they want to make, but, and they've also also listened, they've also always listened to fans, sometimes those two conflict, yeah. and it feels like there's, a, there's more of a willingness to say, we think this is how it should be done, but clearly the fans want that let's try to find a compromise as opposed to we think this is how it should be done. Yeah, I think that what it might really be coming down to is, you know, absolutely we are listening, and, and, uh, but it is that I've never worked on a game like Destiny before where after the game's done the team still really wants to play. Right? <laughs> Normally it's been, you know, blood, sweat, tears to get something out, it's done, you know, I, I put that behind me, I'm glad people really like it, that's great, it hope it sells well, I can move on to the next thing, continue rear view mirror. But with Destiny, because we've had this long-term commitment, because we know we're building this franchise over time, uh, it's and, and because it's just so fucking fun to play, like, it feels great in your hands to shoot monsters with your friends. Like, right. That's what Destiny is really about. Uh, we all still play it, you know? Like, uh, and, and, and we've done things to make it, it really easy to continue to play, whether you're playing for 900 hours or you've you, you got an hour or two a week to play. And so because of that, we, like I said, we've become members of the community too, and we're there, we're playing it at home. I think a lot of games you get this disconnect between the community and what, what the team wanted to make, and then the disconnect never gets resolved. But because with, the team's moved on. Yeah, because the team's moved on. But with us, it's, it hasn't been resolved. Like, we were playing Skull Loss with Arkburn too, and it was terrible. <laughs> Like, well, how did this, how did this happen? You know, what well, we had to think, you know, we played it totally tough, it was good, but it wasn't. You get on your couch at home, you're like, this is way too hard. You know, like, this is, this is what we, this is not what we intended, this is not, community's right to call us up for this, you know? And so I think it's, um, I think that, that, that's responsible for that. Very cool. All right, thank you. Um, Matt Stylus wants to know if there will be cutscenes in Take the Game. There will be. Like, we have a, a brand new campaign, it has, uh, has cinematics and a, and a full story, you know, that, that's about Oryx, the, the Taken King. He's an ancient and powerful high lord that has, you know, uh, come to our system with a single goal in mind. That's revenge for the death of his son Crota, right? right. Um, and uh, there's there are absolutely cinematics. Will old activities be integrated into the new process? Will, will they get will they get any upgrades? To, to be integrated into the Taken King, or are they, are they just being put to the side? I can say that old activities, they're not like being put up to pasture. They're still going to be there. Um, but we're adding a whole slew of new activities for the Taken King that are going to be at the forefront. Like our new missions, new strikes, new patrols, public events, you know, the new six-man raid, right? Um, and that's going to be the content that, you know, we're going to point point the cannon at, you know? Uh, but some old content is still going to be there. There's going to be New players that decide this is the time to jump in, right? And they're, they're going to start at level one and, 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 and you know be resurrected by their ghost and go out into the world, and then they're going to go through and they're going to choose to play the, the Dark Below or the House of Wolves. And so that content's also going to be there. But it's, not, it's not going away. Fair enough. Um, Fuck One wanted to know if the the Mita in Mita Multi Touch is the same as the Marathon Mita. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but my multi tool is my favorite exotic. I know it's not popular because I, I don't have like ninety exotics. You know, like I've in the uh, in the live game I've only only put like one hundred and thirty hours in because you know, I've got like a newborn baby and I have good reasons. Good reasons. Right, right. But Mida, I just I love Mida. It just feels so good and, and uh, I love the radar all the time and just yeah I love Mida and the speed. <laughs> so, but I, I don't know if it has any relation to the marathon. I okay. Fair enough. Electric Pilot Pirate wants to know if existing patrols are going to be changing with the new content. I can say for sure we're adding new patrols, new, new patrol types, and not just so you know there in, in, in Destiny there are 
you know, a certain number of archetypes, let's call them, of, of patrols, you know. Yeah. Uh, and we're adding new archetypes, like we do new things, not you know, not just go here and shoot these guys and collect the little ether seeds, um, but do another thing. And you know, I don't want to go into details today, but um, but, but we're, we're talking about in the same in the same locations that patrols exist. Yeah, on the existing destinations there'll be new patrols. Okay. So be you know, new things to do on uh, places that uh, you've previously been before, like reasons to explore some of that content again. I think that's exactly what he's asking for that. Yeah. Yeah. There will, and, you know, the Dreadnought is the brand new destination, and there are new patrols on on, on, uh, on the Dreadnought as well. So. so that leads into the next question, actually. So, so the ship is actually in the destination. It's going to have strikes yeah, on yeah. it and, and patrols. Yeah, it's got strikes. That's where the raid takes place. You know, um, it is it is a real fully fledged destination. Like it is, you know, it's what everyone's been asking for, and they're finally getting it. You know. And, and, the, the Dreadnought is Oryx's capital ship, right? It's where he's coming to the system with. And it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a really big place, and it's where a, a bunch of the campaign is going to take place, but you're going to return to it later. And there are secrets to be discovered there. There are things that, at first, you're not going to totally understand that are a bit, you know, inscrutable, but it's this, you know, it's like Dracula's castle, uh, <laughs> but it's full of loot, you know? And, uh, which you're gonna have to work. You're gonna have to work with the community to solve some of its puzzles. Yeah, most of the remaining stuff is stuff you're gonna say no to. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Well, it was awesome, bud. That was great.